So we are going to start with our second part of the lecture. In this part, we are going to discuss accounting equation. As you are familiar with, uh, the accounting equation is assets is equal to liability plus stockholders equity. Okay, what are assets? Asset is something that a business own. What is a liability? A liability is something business owe to other people. What is a stockholder's equity? A stockholder's equity is simply, a stockholder's equity is simply asset minus liability. Let me give you an example. You're, you own a house. You purchase this house, uh, a house for $300,000. You paid 30,000 upfront. So you have a liability of $230,000, sorry, $270,000 liability. So your asset at the time of purchase is the cash that you have paid. Uh, uh, so the price, asset price is 300,000, what you owe is 270,000 is your liability. So what is your equity at that time is 30,000. So you own $30,000 worth of the house out of, so 10% of the house. So five years later, the asset now has a price of say uh, five, 400,000. So at this point you have paid some of the liability. So your liability says 200,000. So now you have an equity of $200,000, 400,000 minus the 200. So that's the idea how much so equity is the idea how much the shareholders or the owner of the business own this asset, all right? So assets are divided into two class, current assets and long-term assets. So what are current assets? Current assets are usually considered assets that have a life of less than one year. So these are examples are cash and cash equivalent, short-term investment, account receivable, prepaid expenses, and also inventory, which is not mentioned in this one. So inventory is also considered a current asset, a short-term asset, current asset is the same thing. The next thing we're going to talk about is long-term assets. So what are our long-term assets are? So the long-term assets are the assets that has a life more than one year. The assets, long-term assets are the assets that are going to provide future benefit. This is the, uh, this is, uh, the actual definition of an asset is asset is something that you own and also asset is something that is going to provide you future benefit. So, but they have a life longer than one month, uh, sorry, one year. So these examples are property, plant and equipment, which means land, building, equipment, machinery, long-term investments, intangible assets. It could be other assets such as oil and gas. It could be mining assets such as a mine of a gold or mine as an iron ore. So these are the long-term assets. So assets, always remember something business own or something that is going to provide you a future benefit. Other things are liabilities. Liabilities mean something or uh, business owe to other people means you have to, it's a debt that you have to pay at a later date. So a liabilities also comes in two flavor, current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Current liabilities simply means those liabilities are due within the one fiscal year or one within the calendar year. Fiscal year means, uh, for example, the fiscal year does not follow the calendar year from January to December. For Walmart, the fiscal year is starts on February 1st and on January 31st. Majority of the companies use calendar year January through December and IRS also appreciate if you use calendar year instead of a fiscal year. So anyway, so what are the current liabilities? Current liabilities, all kinds of payables, accounts payable, salary payable, rent payable, utilities payable, uh, accrued liabilities, that means somebody has worked for you, but you have not paid them yet, or something you have already used, but you haven't paid for it. For example, you receive a electric bill. You have already used the electricity, that's why you're receiving it, but you still have another two weeks, so you will pay it two weeks later. If you don't have a cash, you may pay next month. Long-term liabilities are debts, 
that are payable over a one year. So the two important long-term liabilities that we discuss in our financial accounting uh, course, Accounting 2301, were uh, long-term notes payable, the payable not uh, that are due beyond one year, two year, three years. We talk about bonds and we also talk about leases. So these are the examples of uh, 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 long-term liabilities. Equity is again represent the ownership of the business in the assets. So when you pay off all the liabilities and whatever assets remaining, it's basically your uh, your uh, This is your basically an equity. So for example, you start a business last year, you invest fifty thousand dollars in that business. Fine. A year, two years later, you sold that business for two hundred thousand dollars. At that time, when you were selling the business, your assets were say $100,000 and your liabilities were $50,000. So your net asset, which is net asset is equal to asset minus liabilities. So you have 100K minus 50K. So your net asset is 50K means this is your equity. So net assets and equity is the same thing. So your net as equity is 50K. So when you sell it for $200,000, so $150,000 is what you are receiving. Some people call it gain, but in other places it's, it's defined as a goodwill as well. So, so this is a uh, 150, so this is your equity in the business. So the next thing, the important thing is retained earning. So what is a retained earning? Retained earning is basically an accumulation of your earnings, the earnings that has been provided by the business over the years. So I will make a little T chart here for you, equity formula. So that's your beginning balance. Always remember uh, equity is a balance sheet account. So it's a permanent account. Permanent account always have a beginning balance and always have an ending balance. What you add to it is net income. What you subtract is a net loss and you also subtract the dividend. So you get, so if your beginning balance, for example, you just starting a business uh, this year, so it's gonna be zero. Net income, suppose you have $10,000. You do, if you have a net income, then you do not have a net loss. And suppose you pay $1,000 in the dividend, so your ending balance would be 9,000. And that 9,000 will become next year beginning balance of equity for $9,000. All right, we talked about transaction. A transaction is any event that affects the financial position of the business and can be measured with faithful representation. Faithful representation means basically we have a paperwork to support that transaction. For example, you are running a business and you purchase an inventory for $10,000. Obviously, when you are going to purchase the inventory from someone, you have to pay them. So you would receive an invoice from them that says, sir, you purchased this inventory last month. You now owe us $30,000. So when you write a check to them, you have another record that you pay them. So usually when the purchase initiated, it starts with a purchase order and that purchase order gets approval from a manager and then it goes to the your vendor and vendor provides you the inventory and later he also gives you the invoice. So the purchase order, approval uh, papers, uh, what we call the third thing, invoice, and the fourth is the payment. You can keep together all of those things. So when your auditor comes and say, you said you purchased inventory on such a such date for $10,000. Could you please tell me if there is a paperwork related to you have? So you're gonna show all the full paperwork. So he's gonna see the purchase order, approval uh, letter or approval form, and then an invoice from the vendor and the payment uh, that you have made through a check. So that's basically a transaction and a faithful representation that you have. Uh, to prove that you did in fact, or the business in fact purchased this uh, transaction, uh, th this inventory. Next, we're going to talk about the financial statement. I already told you financial statements are four of the financial statement, income statement, balance sheet, a statement of uh, retained earning and stockholders, a statement of stockholders equity, and a statement of cash flow. So let's talk with balance sheet. Balance sheet always reported at a point in time. So what we are saying that when we prepare a balance sheet on December 31st, 2020, we are saying at this moment, on December 31st, 2020, I have $100 of liabilities, $200 of assets, and the equity is say 200 minus the 100 is $100 is my equity. 
So balance sheet is going to report all the assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. Income statement always report the results of operation during a, 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 from, of a given time period. So what time period are we talking about? It could be from January 1st to December 31st if you, it is a year worth of operation. If it is a quarter, it will be three months. If it is a month, it will be for one month, like January 1st to January 31st. Or is it a first quarter? It will be January 1st to the, uh, March 31st. So in that income statement, you are going to report all the revenues and all the expense. So income statement will put all the uh, revenues you got, all the cost of goods sold minus gross profit, and then your operating expense, such as your uh, rent, utilities, salaries, and other expense that will give you operating income. Plus if you have other income, such as interest income, rent income, or if you have any other expenses, then you subtract this, and that will give you uh, income before tax and then you will calculate the tax and you minus the tax and that's your net income. So every time revenue is greater than expense, you have income or net income. And if you have expense are greater than revenue, then you have a loss. Uh, a, st a statement of stockholder reports the event in causing an increase or decrease in a company's stockholders equity during a period of time. Uh, so basically it says how much we owe now and how much so it's number of uh, common stocks it, they are uh, uh, it talks about pre preferred stock common stock uh, retained earning is also part of statement of uh, stockholders equity if you have any treasury stocks that also becomes part of your statement of stockholder uh, equity so it basically says that it reports how the company retained earning balance change from beginning to the end of the period. Consists of two part, contributed capital by the stock and earned. So contributed capital is common stock, preferred stock, additional paid in capital, and earned capital is your retained earnings. So, so contributed capital is the stockholders, common stock, preferred stock, additional paid in capital, and earned income uh, part is the cap, uh, retained earning. Uh, a statement of cash flow, as we discussed in uh, Accounting 2301, has three parts. A state, uh, cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. It basically tells us how much cash came into the company and how much cash went out of the company. The most important part of these three activities is the operating activity because as a business, you should generate most of your cash from your operation if you are in uh, if you are a bakery then most of your cash comes from by selling cakes and pastries and donuts if you have a bigger shop and you have rented out to somebody else uh, say a person who's selling ice cream and you receive a rent say two thousand dollars so the people uh, who are reading your financial statement who are trying to figure out whether they should lend you the money or should invest in your business are not interested as much in the two thousand dollar rent that you are receiving is as much they are interested in seeing how many cakes you are selling how much money so for example if you make two hundred thousand dollars by selling cakes and pastry that looks really nice compared to the two thousand rent that you got from the uh, from the person who is selling ice cream in the same store. So what is investing activity? Investing activities means you are investing in the business. Either you're buying long-term assets, uh, such as uh, uh, for a bakery, you may buying a bigger oven, you are buying all the other uh, uh, gadgets and machinery that helps you make uh, more different kinds of pastries or donuts and cakes. I really don't know, I mean, I'm my, I feel water in my mouth right now, but that's the, the point. What is the financing activity? Financing activity simply means how much money coming into the business, either you are selling your shares or the money that you are borrowing. So operating activity is the most important, investing in uh, activity the second most important because you are investing in your future. So for example, as a student, you are borrowing money, say, from Department of Education to pay for this class or this semester. This is the money that you are borrowing. So you are financing your education through a student loan. In what you are investing, you are investing your effort and your time to get an A in this course and other courses. So at the end of the, uh, the semester, the, your GPA of 4.0 show that what you have invested and the result of that investments. 
and the financing actually showed that you have paid like borrowed two thousand dollars from Department of Education to finance the activity that you went to Tarrant County College. You took four classes and you got A in all those four classes. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about, which is important in your understanding of doing this course, uh, financial statement analysis. So in order to analyze the, uh, what is financial statement means analyzing the financial, so understanding the financial statement. To understand the financial statement, we need to understand what is the relationship among all these statements. So the first thing, net income from net in income statement is used to compute ending retained earnings on the statement. I just show you that how net income is. So a uh, beginning balance of retained earnings, we can write this way, plus the net income minus the dividend is equal to ending balance of retained earnings. So that is used. Ending common stock, retained earnings, and total equity from the statement of stockholder is shown on the balance sheet. So you, as you know, these common stock, retained earnings, and total equity all are balance sheet account. As I said before, balance sheet accounts are permanent account. They have a beginning balance and ending balance. So that's, we calculate the difference. So at the beginning of the year, how much assets you have, how much liabilities you have, and how much equity you have. And now at the end of the year, how much assets you have, how much equity you have, and how much liability you have. The ending cash balance on the statement of cash flow is shown on the balance sheet. As a, again, cash is a current asset. Current asset is a part of asset, and those assets are play, uh, uh, reported on the financial statement, which is called balance sheet. The beginning period of balance sheet shows the company financial position at the earlier point. So last year, when you close your financial statement on December 31st, suppose you have a cash of $5,000. Now, at the end of December 2021, you are closing. Now you have cash of $8,000. So what it means, it means your cash has increased by $3,000. That's what we have uh, deduced from this in information. The income statement, a statement of stockholder, and a statement of cash flow report activity for a period of time. Like a balance sheet reports what ha what happened at at point in time, like December thirty first. The income statement, a statement of stockholders' equity, and a statement of cash flow reports what happened during the year. So that's a important difference that we need to make. And there could be a question in your exam or quiz what is point in time and what is during the period. Uh, the end of period balance sheet reports the company financial position at this later point in time. So balance sheet always provides you the beginning balance, the beginning of the year and end of the year. An income statement, stockholders equity and statement of cash flow provides information what happens from January 1st to January 31st. As we discussed uh, earlier and I share with you that sometimes uh, for to follow this uh, uh, what we call a full disclosure principle of the gap generally accepted accounting principle in the financial statements we have to provide a certain other uh, qualitative information so management discussion and analysis is one qualitative information that we provide so manager interpretation of the company's recent financial uh, condition or performance or what they think what's the company so in this management discussion and analysis or mda management provides you what we have done this year whether we did good or bad and what are the reasons of doing good or bad and where do they see this company is going in the future so for example last year a lot of companies businesses shut down or lost a lot of money due to covid uh so that would be a part of the management discussion analysis what is notes to financial statement notes to financial statements are certain information it could be assumption it could be estimates that they provide in order to better understand the number for example uh, uh Accounting is not always hard and fast. Sometimes they use estimate. And one of the things that we have discussed in, uh, in accounting, uh, financial accounting, accounting 2301 was account receivable. 
And under account receivable, we discuss aging of account receivable. Under aging of account receivable, we discuss uh, the issue that what is the probability that we are go not going to receive some of the account receivable. So that was the estimate the way. So for example, if the company has $10,000 worth of account receivable, they believe that 500, they may not be able to uh, receive from the customer. So their net account receivable is 10,000 minus 500. That 500 is just an estimate. It could be more than 500 or it could be less than 500. So we have to uh, attach, uh, inform in the notes to financial statement. Also auditor's report. Auditor report is a report that the auditor is going to provide you after performing the audit of the financial statement. So in the auditor report, audit uh, auditor is going to tell you whether these financial statement are fairly represented, means there is no lies or deceit in these financial statement and whether this business is going to survive the next one year or not. So these are the import three important uh, paragraphs or uh, reports that are part of the financial statement. Uh, so why do we, what is the objective of financial reporting? The objective is to make this financial information useful for decision making. What kind of decision? So for example, if you want to purchase uh, shares in any publicly traded company, how would you make a decision? Are you going to make a decision based on, well, I like Google, so I'm gonna buy Google, or I drink a lot of Pepsi, so I'm gonna buy Pepsi, or I, my parents use Pfizer's medicine, so I'm gonna use Pfizer. Usually people do not make this decision solely based on these three criteria. The majority of the decision making was done based on reading their financial statement how much cash, for example, this company is generating. So that's one thing. So that information is gonna come from a statement of cash flow. And it provides the information about the company resources and claim on the resources. What are the resources mean? What kind of assets they have and what kind of claims they have? Account receivable is another example, is a claim the business has on their uh, customers. The next thing we talk about is international financial reporting standard. You can read it. I do not think I have put any question in any of your quiz or any of the exam uh, about international financial reporting standard. You just need to know because if you go for an interview, they may ask you what IFRS stand, stand for. You can simply say it's international financial reporting standard. And who provides uh, the rule making, who's the rule making, is it IASB, International uh, 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 Accounting Standard Board that provide this. So we're gonna stop our uh, discussion over here at this point and we will continue our financial statement analysis discussion in the next uh, uh, video.